Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiter here, consultant, audiologist and director of ClearWax. Thank you for joining me in my latest video using the WaxGate. And here we have a patient who attended reporting bilateral otalgia, so ear pain. Occlusion, so occlusion is when you can hear your internal sounds inside your head. It's like you've got a bucket over your head, as well as um, reduced hearing and also some itchiness. They have been suffering from a really bad cold and cough for the last five weeks, which is still ongoing, and they do report some nasal congestion. So uh, this patient was actually seen by another specialist uh, prior, um, but they really struggled because of how narrow this patient's ear canal is. So I'm using, although the patient's got a narrow ear canal, I've decided to just use our medium size specular, because even if I use the smaller size specular, it's very unlikely that I'm going to be able to enter any deeper because the ear is so narrow. You can see this wax is crusted and enveloped with some dry skin, so I've just put some medical grade olive oil spray in. Sorry, I've got a bit of a runny nose. And I'm just trying to tease this out of this patient's ear. And we're nearly there. Um, the left ear was a bit more difficult, so stay tuned for that. In that ear, I had to use an ear correct as well and that it was a bit more narrow so post removal of these wax plugs the patient still felt blocked and you may notice in a moment when we examine the eardrum it's more apparent in their left side that they've got a retraction of their eardrum in the attic and also the posterior superior quadrant um, so they're suffering from a condition called eustachian tube dysfunction or obstruction uh, sometimes when you've got a cold or a nasal congestion, it can block the eustachian tube at the back of the nose, the nasopharynx. Um, there can be some mucus or inflammation there. And the eustachian tube is the pressure equalising tube in the ear. It helps to equalise the middle ear pressure. We want the middle ear pressure, so the cavity behind the eardrum, to be equal to the air pressure in the atmosphere and also the ear canal. And there we are, you can see the eardrum is slightly retracted in the attic and posterior superior quadrant. Again, a very narrow ear canal. I've just increased the brightness now. I've just adjusted the focus as well, so we get a clearer view. So this is their left side. The eustachian tube is typically at normal resting state shut, and it's shut to prevent upper respiratory tract infections, just like what this patient's experiencing, traveling up into the middle ear cavity. Um, and it also prevents you from hearing your internal sounds and voice. So if that eustachian tube is permanently patent and open, uh, whenever you speak, your voice will not only travel, um, not only stimulate the organ of hearing via bone conduction, but you also hear it via air conduction, where your voice travels through your ear canal, stimulates and vibrates the eardrum, and these vibrations are transmitted through the organ of hearing. But your voice will also travel up your nose and hit the inside of the eardrum via the eustachian tube. So you'll hear yourself twice and it'll be out of phase. So there'll be a slight time delay between hearing your voice through your ear canal and up nose. And a lot of people with a permanently open eustachian tube report uh, a muffling sensation of their own voice. And they can also hear themselves breathe. And whenever they breathe, uh, whenever they inspire and um, expire, you can see the eardrum moving in synchrony. That's because the air is also traveling in and out of the eustachian tube and middle ear cavity whilst breathing. So the eustachian tube normally should be shut and it opens um, um, involuntarily um, probably about four or five times a minute whenever you swallow, yawn or chew, just enough to equalise the air pressure and it's also a drainage tube so if there's any fluid accumulation in the middle ear cavity it allows it to drain. So this side's putting up a bit more of a fight. This is the, the ear that the patient had more symptoms in. In fact I performed the left ear first but I've just reversed it for your uh, viewing pleasure and on this side um, you can see it's a lot more narrower I had to reduce the exposure because we're getting a lot of reflection from the hairs and the skin coating this and it's just trapped here so I'm trying to rotate it sometimes with this kind of type of um, a solid piece of wax if you roll it around in the ear rotate it uh, and trying to get it out at a different angle it works so I'm just reaching out for the right correct. I could have used the right ear pick, if, if truth be told, as well, but um, decided to use the the um, right correct just because it's got a bit more surface surface. I can leverage this out, as you can see, and it's almost out now. So, as you may have guessed, this patient is of a certain age. So, as we get older, our 
ears tend to be more hairier. We can develop what we call auricular trichosis, and it's more prominent in males because males have stored up testosterone. Um, and these hairs in the younger, uh, younger years of life are not sensitive to testosterone, but when we reach a certain age, they do react to testosterone, which then creates full and longer hair growth and stimulation. So we just got some residual skin here, so I'm just going to remove that. Again, a very, very narrow ear canal. Just going to hover over the top, and there's also a little bit on the anterior canal, which we're going to remove as well. And then we'll have a view of the patient's eardrum, and you'll see the retraction in the attic and also the posterior superior quadrant. So I'm just going to increase the brightness, get it focused. Well, there you can see. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. And if you're interested in the wax scope or the eye clear scope as a clinical ear care specialist, please do email info at clearwax.co.uk. Thank you. Bye.